everybody, welcome to your Surf Safe Boot Camp training. I got my boot, I got my Crocodile Dundee hat on, and, and I'm ready to help you with your Surf Safe. Um, so listen, this is for the adults who have a serious desire to get this Surf Safe training done. Okay, you're going to want to get your hands on this. I'll email it to you if you have any difficulty getting it. Shoot me an email right here. This is the best way to reach me. Um, Gerson.pooch at gmail.com. Okay, just let me know. Free e-study guide and I will send that your way so that we can get you um, your SurfSafe Food Manager certification. It's about 26 pages in that, in that guide. It's a total of 45 because it has two retired SurfSafe Food Manager certification exams and the content, the real content is roughly 26 pages. If you want to go with the other study guides that are provided in the industry, I absolutely encourage you to do that as well. Um, they're probably going to be about 150 pages to 350 pages. But if you want to learn it all, then you can totally go that way. Otherwise, I'm here to help you pass the food manager certification um, as quickly as possible. Um, tune into the videos. I, I'm going to... Go at a steady enough clip so that anybody can keep up. And I'm going to take off my hat because my head is getting sweaty already. Let me put that over there. And uh, so here we go. And if you have any questions, comments, topics, or observations, um, just shoot me, a, shoot me an email. Let me, know, let me know where you're struggling. But be patient because I am going to cover everything that I can to make it so that you're successful with your food manager certification. How many questions are on the exam, you ask? Great question. Thank you, audience member. We do have a live audience member, so every now and then you're going to hear a disembodied voice. But uh, she's actually here. Um, and maybe we'll get her on camera one of these days, too. But anyway, that's a whole different... I, have no, I don't have money to put her on, on the video. But um, 90 questions, multiple choice if you study. It's multiple guess if you didn't. I'm, I'm working with you to make it a multiple choice questions, right? Uh, you need a 75% or higher to pass, and the certification is good for five years. Five year certification. Where is it good? It's good anywhere in the continental United States. So wherever you move to, your certification is going to be valid. All right. Um, if you already have experience in the industry, it may come in helpful or not. We'll find out as we go along because um, some establishments are a little more... Uh, lenient with food safety and others are more strict right but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it now I'm going to give you the serve safe food manager instruction the way the test is presented which means it's all over the place okay I've got my handy dandy little notebook here and I'm gonna start where most people um, struggle right they they struggle with the temperatures oh I don't know the temperatures awesome it, this is me teaching you the temperatures. Um, there are going to be multiple modules, so uh, tune in for the other modules. Uh, but this is module number one if you're joining us now. It could be module number six if you're joining us later. Right? So I don't know where you are in your travel, but here we go. So a couple of numbers. And let me throw them out there, right? Because hopefully you've had a chance to look over this, the e-study guide. I'm going to give you a number, and it's 110 degrees Fahrenheit. By the way, I'm going to give you everything in Fahrenheit. I'm not going to give you anything in Celsius. In the exam, you're going to see options for Celsius and Fahrenheit. Okay, but all my numbers are going to be um, Fahrenheit. I'm going to give you another number, and I'm intentionally going to put it where it's going to most benef be most beneficial to you. Right, so what is 110 degrees? You don't know? That's cool. There's a space in the middle, and that's intentional. And then we have 171 at the end. Do you know what 171 is? And if you don't know, that's cool too, because that's my job. So here we go. I'm going to draw this for you now and see if this kind of starts helping you out. Kind of, sort of, maybe? Nothing? Yes? Okay, so I'm going to add this little thing here, and then I'm going to do my best three-dimensional drawing here. Right? And then I'm going to put this, and I'm going to draw this little guy here, and I'm going to, 
Uh, I didn't take art class. You might have already noticed that. But it's not that bad, actually, right? And I'm going to connect it here. And then it's going to go here. And <clears throat> we're going to put a little thing here. Right? If you already guessed, well, you know what? Let me give you a little more, more information. <laughs> and then I'll let you guess, right? <clears throat> Let's call this wash. Let's call this rinse. And let's call this sanitize. All right, did you get it? I know some of you got it. You're, you're just jumping up and out of your chairs. Yes, this is a three compartment sink. Three compartment sink. All right, so <clears throat> these are the temperatures without detergents or chemicals or sanitizers. Okay, meaning that if I were to use a sanitizer and pour 171 degree water in it, it's not going to be effective anymore because that sanitizing solution has a very specific water temperature, right? So if I go too high, it basically invalidates that sanitizer. So 110 and 171, these are the temperatures for um, those particular sinks. So what particular sinks are we talking about specifically? I'll number them. So this is step one, this is step two, and this is step three, okay? There's more information here. This little space down here, I drew that intentionally because that little space down there has a name, and that is called an air gap. Now, air gaps happen there. They're going to happen if I, if I was able to have the faucets up here, right? And I'll, I'll draw the best possible faucet that I can. But right here, this space between where the faucet ends and the sink is, be, is down here, that area down here also is your air gap, right? So you'll have some sinks only use one faucet and they, they're able to feed all three sinks. Other sinks you, you're going to find in the industry, some of the other sinks have three faucets, right? So depending on where you are, you may have three faucets, or one faucet located in the middle with a reach and also with a spray nozzle to wash the dishes. Okay, but those are all referred to as air gaps. That's the air gap and that's the three compartment sink. So, I'm hot water sanitizing at 171 degrees. What else can I do to hot water sanitize? I can hot water sanitize tabletops, food prep areas, anything I can sanitize. If I'm going to sanitize with, with, um, with with chemicals, then obviously it's not going to be 171. If I find myself washing dishes at 171, you also want to make sure you protect the you use the protective gloves. Otherwise, your hands are going to are going to be a, a royal mess. Now, I'm going to leave most of the sink here because um, oh, I, okay, I can rewrite that. That's okay. You know what, I'm going to erase the sink because I didn't give myself enough space at the end. So I'm going to erase all of my sink so that you get your bang for your buck, right? So I'm going to redraw my masterpiece, but I am going to make it a wee bit wider this time, right? Because I'm going to do this and this, which looks like it was there, but now you're going to see that it wasn't there. So here's what we've got going on. And then I'm going to relabel the sink. Right? I'll put that little circle so you know that this is the sink. This is wash. This is your rinse. And this was your sanitize. Right? And originally, we had this labeled as number one, number two, and number three. I did say originally. Because, yes, something is going to change, and you're going to see that change happen. Now, what we have here is referred to as scrape. And at the end, for those of you that called it out, I heard you, um, it's uh, air dry. Right? 
So you have air dry and you have scrape. So what happened? I'm going to put the numbers down here because now it changed. So now this is actually step one, step two, three, four, and five. So technically this space here is your three compartment sink, right? All of this is your three compartment sink, right? But now this guy down here, and I'm going to use black just because, this is actually now referred to as your five step dishwashing process. So why am I harping on this? Well, because it's a good chance you may find yourself with a question like the sample questions I've run into that let's say I ask you what is the third step of a three compartment sink? Right? So if I say to you what is the third step of a three compartment sink? I'm only asking you to think about that. And the third step of a three compartment sink, right, if I could cover all that, is what? Sanitize. Sanitize. There you go. I owe her a dollar at least so far. But yeah, so it's sanitized, right? So that's the third, third compartment, the third compartment of the third compartment sink. But if I ask you what is the third step in the dishwashing process, what is the third step of your five step dishwashing process? Rinse, right? So third step of a three compartment sink is sanitized, but the third step of a five step dishwashing process is rinse. Okay, so check your, check your polls. If you have a little test anxiety, that's cool. I had that for years too. Um, but be mindful of that. Now when you do place dishes at the end, pots and pans and things like that, they need to be placed upside down so they drip dry. Okay, you shouldn't be drying um, with a rag. Because if I end up drying, I'll, I'll tell you a story. Let me tell you a true story. Make believe this is a dish. Um, we were at Disney years ago, and we, not the Disney park, the Disney area, so that Disney doesn't come sue me, okay? It wasn't the Disney theme park. It was outside, it was in Orlando, a national chain restaurant, but um, I, went to the restroom, it was busy, like it used to be pre-COVID-19, right? And on the way back from the rest restroom, I see a gentleman in the kitchen drying dishes on his apron. I mean, God bless that restaurant for being so busy, but that apron was touching every single dish that came through. Now, you're busy, you're making money, awesome, fabulous. Get more dishes or have disposable paper towels so you can use your, your El Cheapo brand. Dry the dish, throw the towel out, dry the dish. Because remember, it's about the health of the public, right? And we're going to talk about more. We're going to shed more light on that in a minute as we go on. So hopefully, you can see the value of a three-compartment sink here. There was a lot of information. I totally got that. But back it up. If you need to, hit pause, rewind. Or stay with me, and we're going to go to the next part. So even though I did say I was going to talk about the numbers, the temperatures, do you see already how I can't talk to you about one without shedding light on the other, right? And making the best use out of your time as well. So that's what we're doing, right? Um, there is another one. So let's go back to that sink right here, right? And we said, whoops. We said this was your hot water sanitizing, right? And this was your wash. Now I'm going to give you another number, and the other number is that, 181 degrees Fahrenheit. Think of the same step as this, right? But instead, that is going to be as a result of your dish washing machines final cycle. So that's when the dishes are in there, they're, 
They're coming in through one end, right over here, whatever. And they come out this way and they are steaming. They are hot, 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 hot to the touch. Okay. Um, you can take the temperature on a machine like this. Um, I've had a little bit of a, oh, what's the name of the thermometer? There is a thermometer and right now the, it'll come back to me. But basically it's a very cool thermometer. You'll put it in the dish rack. You send the dish rack through there. And what it does is it holds the last highest temperature when it was in there. And then when it comes out, it stays at that temperature until you reset it. So that's how you can check the temperature in there. Obviously, you don't want to stick your hand in there with a thermometer or throw the th a thermometer that could potentially break in there. Right? So now we've got, an, we added a number, right? We started with 110. 171 was hot water sanitizing. Now you added 181, and that's your dishwashing machine's final rinse cycle. Right? So you're keeping track of those values. Um, by the way, you always want to make sure you um, commit to memory, things like this, because while they are relatively simple, they are so critical that you may find that they repeat several times through the exam. So if you got it wrong once, and let's say hypothetically it was there eight times, you may have just gotten it wrong seven more times and failed your test, right? Here's another one. I'm going to give you, I'll give you the values first, because I promised to start that way and see what you got. I'll put it down here just so that it's easier to refer to. And then I'm going to use red to indicate hot, right? And then let's put this guy over here, right? And then let's create a little bridge so that they can hang out together, right? We'll connect them, that way they can stay in touch, right? So what is 41 to 135? Any guesses? No? Okay, great. So this space right here is what is referred to as the TDZ, otherwise known as your temperature danger zone. What does that mean? It means a lot more than you would think, right? Because if I wanted to trick you on a test, I wouldn't do that. Yes, I would. If I wanted to trick you on a test, and I say, uh, let's say hypothetically, I'm, I say the, the poultry was being held at, what's better time, is it okay to hold the poultry at 134 degrees? Let's keep it simple, right? Is that okay? Is that okay if I'm hot holding at 134 degrees? Most people would say, sure, why not? It's only a degree off. Problem is, we don't know how long it's been a degree off, right? And technically, anything inside of that spot there that I drew, this is all part of your temperature danger zone. So whether it's 134 or we say 42 degrees, no dice. We don't, we don't want to play with those. Okay, it's already, it's bad, right? But if I tell you, if I, if I pose a question on the test for you and I say, how about if I stored it at 37 degrees Fahrenheit? Yes, that's fine because it's anything that is 41 degrees or less. Same thing up there, and I'm out of space. I'm sorry for that. But let's say, um, let's make the 135 a little smaller so that we can visual, have our visual aid over there, right? 135. How about if I said 141 degrees? We're okay because we're saying anything, oh, that arrow is terrible, but it is an arrow, okay? So anything outside of the temperature danger zone is good. It's fair game. So I just gave you a couple of extra numbers, but I'm going to leave it here for a second because I do want to add yet another number that's going to matter. Um, it's in the notes. It's probably on your test. It still happens in the industry, and I'm going to add this value over here. I'm going to use, I'll use green just because. Okay, obviously this is not to scale, but 45 degrees Fahrenheit. There are three items that can be received at 45 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to erase all this other stuff. 
because this little stuff doesn't matter anymore. But there are three items that can be received at 45 degrees or less. Okay? And those three items that can be received, whoa, that can be received at 45 degrees Fahrenheit or less. By the way, if you don't remember from school how to use less than or greater than, it is such an easy little trick. I would love to teach it to you right here, right now. So most of us don't know when one means what and when the other means the other. This looks like a lazy little L, right? So if you look at that, and I were to put the word less in there, less is that, and this is greater than, okay? Um, so if you just remember the L on that, you'll know it's 45 degrees Fahrenheit or less. That's the easiest way to remember. Anyway, so what are the items you're asking? All right, here we go. The three items are um, shell eggs. Two, uh, they're not in any specific order. I'm just putting them in this order. Okay, so don't think that um, shellfish and milk, but specifically which milk? The milk that we're talking about is pasteurized milk. Okay, so these are the only three things that you could technically receive at 45 degrees or less. Alrighty, now if you're not familiar with the process of pasteurization, a quick little lesson on pasteurization, it's basically they take a food product, let me use another color, they take a food product, they ramp up the temperature, and then they hold it there for a certain amount of time depending on the food product, then they bring down the temperature, then they bring up the temperature, then they, <laughs> you're getting the gist of it, right? Bring down the temperature. So that's how you do pasteurization. Why is it called pasteurization? Well, the gentleman that discovered pasteurization, his name was Louis Pasteur back in 1876. And if the story is accurate, it was actually um, part of the creation process for pasteurization was to help beer have a longer shelf life. So amen for beer. Um, so that's why you have pasteurization. That's, so they also call it, you might also see it listed as UHT. UHT is short for ultra high temperature. So that's what they do. And if you want to find it, those little creamers for your coffee that aren't refrigerated, look on the label. You're either going to read pasteurized, pasteurization, or UHT. Treated. So that's what they do with those products. But anyway, um, so we keep covering temperatures. Not, not, not too shabby, right? All right, wonderful. Again, if I'm going too fast, too slow, you can fast forward, rewind. If you need to send an email, hit pause. I don't know. You're in control. Um, what else have we got? Oh, this one. this one's great. And we have enough time to cover one more. Alrighty, so I'm going to give you the values. I'm going to give you temperature and time for this particular one. Um, what am I referring to? 100 degrees for 20 seconds. What I'm talking about here, and I'm going to use my, my, my hand as a as a guy because I, I've been drawing some hands that look like they're out of a horror movie. But um, this is what this is. So hand washing is that, okay? So 100 degrees for 20 seconds. 20 seconds is total time. If you read the book or a book, you're going to find that out of those 20 seconds, 10 seconds should be spent lathering your hands. So 10 of those 20 seconds should be spent rubbing your hands together. Okay. Um, 
every hand washing station requires a sign that looks like that, right? Employees must wash hands before returning to work. I have it in Spanish too. Los empleados tienen que lavarse las manos antes de regresar a trabajar. What that means, and if you didn't realize I was, just, I was bilingual, you just learned that too, right? Um, that means that these signs are required anywhere that there is a hand washing station. Now, you don't have to go out and spend money on these. You can just, when I had an ice cream shop, I simply had something like that at every hand washing station. Save tons of money, right? If, if money's no object, then go ahead and buy them. But this is required in the public restrooms, next to the, um, the three compartment sink is supposed to also have a hand washing station. So you're gonna need a hand washing sign, hot and cold running water, soap. You're also gonna need one of these, a garbage can, right? Disposable paper towels. Um, now hand sanitizer, and I have just a little bit of time left on this particular run. Hand sanitizer is like an airbag in your car. Your, your, your airbag won't work, won't save your life unless you're buckled up. Your hand sanitizer is useless in the restaurant because your hands have dirt, protein, and grease. So hand sanitizer will not take care of what needs to be taken care of. So hand washing is king. Wash your hands first and then the hand sanitizer needs to be safe for human consumption in the event there's traces of it and you go to work with food. That's all the time we have. Stay tuned for another module, unless you already saw it. Like I said, I don't know which order you're going in, but I'm going to cover everything that is in the book. If you need that e-study guide, shoot me an email. I'll put my email one more time over here so that you can reach me. Um, it is a 26-page PDF, really, the reality of it. And obviously, it is free. So um, don't, don't take your credit card out. You're not going to need it. All right, no credit cards accepted, no cash, nothing. All right, free study guide. First thing dot last name at gmail.com. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Be blessed. Stay tuned. Good luck with that, sir. Safe. Bye.